Welcome to this video on rotor-rotor interaction. In the previous videos, we have considered the aerodynamics and performance of single rotors. However, UAM vehicles typically rely on multiple rotors to provide the required thrust. These rotors will interact with each other. In this video, we will consider these interactions. First, we will briefly discuss the characteristics of the rotor stream tube. Then, we will treat the aerodynamics of rotor-rotor interactions and their effect on the rotor performance. The interactions between different rotors are the consequence of the rotor-induced changes to the flow field. The rotor thrust can be considered as a pressure jump across the rotor disc which increases the total pressure downstream, in the slipstream of the rotor. The pressure jump causes an increase in actual velocity in the stream tube. The static pressure upstream of the rotor is decreased, while downstream it is higher than that of the free stream. The increase in velocity induced by the rotor causes a contraction of the stream tube. Because of the rotor torque, there is also a non-zero tangential velocity component in the slipstream. Finally, the slipstream contains the rotor blade wakes and tip vortices. The contours of vorticity shown in the top right of the slide highlight the time dependency of the flow field in the rotor slipstream. For UAM vehicles with multiple rotors, the stream tubes of the different rotors will interact with each other. The resulting rotor-rotor interaction phenomena can be grouped into two categories. For the lateral interaction case, the rotors are adjacent to each other. For the axial interaction case, the rotors are separated in the streamwise direction. The interaction mechanisms for both cases are different, so let's discuss them separately. For the lateral interaction case, the stream tubes of adjacent rotors affect each other. This has a minor impact on the time average rotor performance at zero degree angle of attack. A significant reduction in performance only occurs when the tip spacing between the adjacent rotors is very small. In actual inflow, the rotor efficiency decreases by at most about 1%. In the hover condition, the maximum loss in efficiency is somewhat larger, at up to 3%. The efficiency loss rapidly decreases upon increasing the spacing between the rotors. At higher angles of attack, for example for vertical rotors in cruise, the interaction becomes much more relevant. In that case, the second rotor is in the downwash from the first rotor leading to an increased power consumption of about 5 to 15% for a given thrust. Besides the time averaged effect, there's also an unsteady effect. The perturbation of the inflow near the blade tips causes unsteady blade loading. This causes vibrations and modifies the amplitude and directivity of the rotor noise emissions. The interaction effects are a function of the difference in phase angle between the passing blades of the adjacent rotors. By controlling this phase difference, the interaction can therefore be modified. This technique is called synchrophasing. In this video, we see three adjacent rotors at constant rotational speed illuminated with a stroboscope. Without synchrophasing, the relative phase of the blades is random. With synchrophasing enabled, the relative phase of the blades is controlled. In the first example, the blades always meet in the horizontal plane. In the second example, the relative phase offset is modified to adjust the aerodynamic and aeroacoustic performance of the rotor. The synchrophasing technique can be an effective control strategy to manage adverse unsteady effects of lateral rotor-rotor interactions. For the actual interaction case, the dominant interaction is caused by the operation of a downstream rotor in the slipstream of an upstream rotor. The downstream rotor experiences a perturbed inflow 
characterized by increased axial velocity, non-zero tangential velocity, and vertical flow structures. Contrary to the lateral interaction case, for the axial interaction case, the inflow perturbation has a significant impact on the time averaged rotor performance. The downstream rotor can suffer an increase in power consumption of up to 30% for a given thrust, depending on its location with respect to the upstream rotor. The insulation penalty increases with increasing overlap between the rotors. Besides the modification of the time average loading, the interaction will also lead to unsteady blade loads. The downstream rotor will experience a periodic excitation due to the blade wakes and tip vortices from the upstream rotor. This is especially relevant for noise and vibrations. In this video, we have discussed the aerodynamics of interacting rotors. You have learned about rotor stream tube characteristics and rotor-rotor interactions. In the next video, we will discuss the impact of the rotors on the airframe.